Good morning, good morning. You probably can't see me very well. I'm actually in the van. It's quite dark in my van when uh, I've got the blinds up. I've got some bubble wrap on the windows, keeping the, the heat in the best I can because the windows let a lot of heat out and in, uh, cold in. Uh, it's absolutely piddling down at the moment, but I'd just like to, before I even start this video, I'd just like to thank Mimes Reusable uh, for uh, drinking bottles this year. Jemima and me spoke at a, uh, a festival and uh, she's been good enough to send me some bottles to show you guys. They're really, really nice, they keep your water warm. And when it's cold like this, I boil my kettle and then the, the overflow of the kettle, I've been putting into the water bottles. I've even been doing this at home. Um, so when you boil your kettle and you make yourself a brew and you've still got hot water left in your kettle, you put it into a hot container like the Mems Reusable ones and uh, it keeps it hot. So when you have your second brew, you've already got either hot water or you've only got to just top it up at the heat. So you're saving yourself all that heating expense. So it's been a really good idea. And these big bottles, these big large litre bottles have been really, really good. And I've got one in the van. It's been keeping my water warm um, when I finished, you know, finished with my kettle. So that's been really good. So thanks for that. And also I'd like to thank um, Ridge Monkey again. Ridge Monkey's been fantastic. Absolutely love the Ridge Monkey in my van. Uh, I can cook myself up like this morning. I've just had some nice um, black pudding and cheese sandwiches. Uh, I know it sounds awful, but you know, it gets me through. It gives me some protein and it uh, gets me through. I am a vampire at the end of the day, so I do like that bit of blood. Um, but yeah, thanks to um, Ridge Monkey. They do water bottles as well, water containers. Absolutely fantastic. I've got one in my van. It's a green water container. Uh, I can't, you can't see it, it's right tucked right down at the moment and I use it for my fresh drinking water because the tap water can get a little bit stagnant if I've had it in there a couple of weeks uh, so I tend to use that for boiling and I use my drinking water that I fill up into my drinking cups uh, and bottles I use it out of that because there's no plastic taste whatsoever so they're really really good so yeah uh, Ridge Monk is well worth checking out they've got lots of different things on there they are a fishing company but to be honest for camper vans and going out like this if you you know if you've got a car and a little burner absolutely perfect for cooking up a bit of breakfast a bit of bacon and some eggs and stuff so yeah thanks to those guys and i'm also going to thank someone else later on um, because they're very important for weather like this and the reason i'm in the van and starting to open this video now is <clears throat> i cannot see the mountains i'm actually in the ogwin valley uh Glen ogwin is next to me i'm going up to uh Klinigwal and i just want to have a look at the um the mountains and be feel like i'm in the mountains and have the snow around it and it's absolutely piddling it down we're at that time of year where we've had that really massive cold spell sort of minus min well we had minus nine a couple of days ago on the way to work i know the country i think went down to minus 17 in some places and um i've come over into north wales because i, I knew i know wales so i know roughly where i can go without being in too much danger with the van and i've come down to Glenogwen because i wanted to go into the mountains and i want to see the snow but it's absolutely piddling it down and the snow's still on the mountains but i can't see anything at the moment so i'm gonna sit in the van for another 10 or 15 minutes if it doesn't stop i'm gonna put my wet gear on and go out but what i want to talk about when i do get out i want to talk about your best uh, the best aperture really for shooting landscape photography now, I know I've waffled on a little bit and said, you know, said thanks to a few people, but it's really important I do mention these people because they help what I do throughout the year. You know, these are the little things that come that go a long way to helping me do what I do. And it's not just because I'm out in a van. They're also usable in normal cars and stuff like that as well. So I do like to mention these companies and these people. They really have been good. And I do like to pass them on to you guys. But yeah, I do. I want to talk about the best f-stop for basic landscape photography. Um, there is no given right or wrong. But there are a couple of things you can think about when you're doing basic, you know, simple landscape photography. There is a couple of f-stops that are well worth uh, bearing in mind and considering. And that's what I really want to talk about. But it's looking really rubbish out there. So uh, hopefully I'll see you in a sec outside. So I'm actually out of the van at the moment and just walking along the road. And it is raining. I just decided, you know what, put your coat on, put your waterproofs on. And just get out and go for a walk doesn't matter what happens even if i don't take any photographs i'm out in the snowy surroundings clinogwin is frozen solid the whole lake is absolutely frozen which for me is a phenomenon i've never seen that before and i'm about to show you another ice sculpture there's some beautiful icicles back up the way uh, as you walk along this road there's little drips and the, the water runs down the, the sides of the hills and the mountains but there's this little waterfall that you come to um, as you're walking up the road and it is frozen yep the, the water's frozen solid and the water's running over the top of it we've got a proper little ice sculpture going on it's, it's quite pretty but not the easiest thing to photograph I have tried in the past but yeah it's it's well nice it looks really good it just gives you a bit of a tempting to what I'm going to see up there because we've got that classic big waterfall on the bridge 
Now I'm expecting it to be quite difficult to walk on. This footpath itself is really icy and slippery, so I'm just going to take my time. Try. I just want, there's a couple of compositions. I want to try and get the river leading up to the Devil's Kitchen, and I'd like to see uh, the Leonid Wall, you know, Leonid Wall all um, iced over, and maybe some nice icicle pictures of the, you know, the waterfall. So I've only got a couple of pictures in mind, so I'm just going to take my time, enjoy it, rather than try and be stupid, and uh, yeah, just take in some of this scenery, because you don't see this every day. So I've just spotted something that you only get once in a million years, I don't know what, once in a million years, once in a blue moon. Um, I'm walking along the road, I just spoke to you and I, and I've just seen something, I thought, I like these leading lines and this ice running through the, through the Hlin, uh, Ogwin being frozen and all that. And then as I pick the camera up, oh my goodness, I've just taken some pictures on my phone and they look absolutely amazing 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 so i'm starting here i'm going to take some pictures from the side of the road something i've never ever done before because if you look behind me look at the perfect ice reflection you've got below penny Irwin. and if i flip you around look at the view you've got in front of you look at this ice line leading down and if you use this as a leading line you've got ice line you've got penny Irwin, you've got the mountains up there uh Glidava and whatever it is uh, it just looks phenomenal reflection of the boathouse i think that is going to make a stunning stunning photo so i'm going to get this shot done i'm going to be using an aperture of f11 which is going to give me a full depth of field and uh, yeah this is going to be an awesome picture So that for me, I think, was a very special photograph or two. Uh, I actually come down onto the shoreline and you can just see that reflection behind me. It's absolutely phenomenal. F11 should give me plenty of depth of field. What I was tending to do then is focus on the mountain and on the actual boathouse because that's the bit you really want in focus. And then at F11, the foreground should be reasonably in focus. Um, you might find that when I got down really close to these sort of reeds down the bottom of these grasses, that that may fall out um, so you could always take two images one from the foreground and one for the background but i'm pretty sure that f11 will be good enough but what a what a unique little photograph that is all i've got to do now is get back up onto the to the road here because this little bit of ice is extremely slippy <laughs> I don't expect the cameras and anything to be working properly at all but as you can see by the view behind me I'm up at Glenedwell uh, or Quimedwell and you've got the Devil's Kitchen there and it's all covered in snow looking really good but not too much snow that it's all white what I like is that texture of stuff so you've got a dust in the snow and the rain's obviously washing it off the rocks so you're getting that nice texture of the blacks and whites the lake is frozen uh, most of the lake's frozen so you're getting this nice glassy reflection like we had down at Ogwin so again we're going to be shooting F11 I'm just looking for something I can put in the foreground probably the classic rock which is over there it gets a nice feature in the front and I've got a little bit of snow on the rock in front of me so trying to get that little bit of snow in it at the foreground, a little bit of rock and then that glassy reflection. Also, looking back, is pretty spectacular. There's some beautiful light going on down there, which you probably won't be able to see on this camera. Um, but you've got a nice pool of water down there that's really reflective. So maybe I'll have a look at that and I might make my way down to there and then back up onto the path just to get a shot from down there as well. I just walked up with a couple of climbers. Uh, they're going right up the top there um, and they've got axes and crampons and all sorts going on. So they're going right up the top. So it's good to walk up with them and have a chat. I've actually got on my crampons on my feet, um, my little pull-on chains, 
never had them on before i brought them out they live in the van i brought them out yesterday to go out with nick livesey if you haven't seen that video check that one out um and yeah i put them on this morning as soon as i started walking up these rocks it was dangerous it was really icy slippy the water's running over the path so it's made in everything like glass and these things are fantastic if without these on i would not have come up here at all they are brilliant so highly recommended i'll find you the link and i'll put them on on put them on for an amazon link for you um, so yeah let's get a composition set up let's get a picture set up and then uh, yeah let's get something shot really isn't going very well at all uh, the conditions are just impossible I'm so wet it's ridiculous uh, lucky enough I'm staying on my feet so far but you can see people behind me going down the pathway it is really really lethal the rain's just not stopping so there's no way I can get a tripod out and put the camera on a tripod there's just no point so this video is turning into a bit of a waste really but I am shooting at f11 and the reason I'm shooting at f11 is because it's giving me that depth of field and the quickness that I don't have to take more than multiple show you know multiple exposures so I'm stopped here because I want to get a shot of this you can see that snaking line going off behind me that nice little dark line in between the snow and then you've got this little pool of water and it's pointing over then to Penny Owen uh, so it's given me a nice feature to sort of send me over to and I'm just going to use this S curve line to take that to take that shot and to make this image work because the mountain on its own a bit bland so having that nice leading line in the snow just uh, just adds to it so I'll get this one and I'm just going to start making my way down because really it is just impossible the snow's melting quite fast now the reflection's gone I took the pictures at the top handheld because the reflection's just gone it's just all changed and not and not very nice at all it really is grey and miserable and it's just taking it all away um but i've enjoyed being out that's that's the main thing so i'll get this shot i'll put it on the screen and i'll see you further down maybe i can find another image between me and getting back to the van uh, i just want to get down off this uh, this ice glacier pathway so uh, fingers crossed So I found another shot on the way down that I quite like. I like the idea of using this bit of a line, this bit of a line coming through here with the mountains in the background because it's giving you a bit of a line there. And I also like the water behind me. So I'm gonna try and walk around on this, on this little patch here, see if I can get another shot with, with all these lines going across through into the mountains. And hopefully it'll work quite well. And uh, there's some people coming down here. This guy here, he's out with his kids and they've actually got a snowball maker, would you believe it? A snowball maker. Have you ever heard anything like it? What happened about being kids and rolling it in your hands? And, uh, <laughs> and apparently I'm Captain Scott. <laughs> Hello, but Captain I, Scott. But I will say these crampons are really giving me a, 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 good, a good confidence on the ice. But yeah, this little line of the water, I think is gonna make really nice photographs. So I'll get the camera out here, just have a little look on these rocks, just to see if I can get myself in another position that, that makes it work well and then uh, yeah, we'll get a shot here as well. F11 again, giving me the full depth of field that I want and the sharpest the camera will work at, which is between F8 and F11. So there you sort of adequate, comfortable settings that your camera will work, probably that it's best and sharpest that.
Well, I'm back in the van. Um, I've been talking to um, a gentleman. I met him at the top up at Idwall, an older fella, he's 72. I just found out he's got a, a pacemaker and everything else. Um, I just made him a cup of coffee, we've been talking. He showed me a few pictures of the cantilever up the top and the castle in the wind. And um, it's a place I definitely want to go up and visit. And I promise I will take you up there as soon as I can this year. Um, hopefully sort of maybe March, April sort of time when the weather sort of starts to dry out after the cold spell. But we are going up and having a look. Now I'm back in the van. This video has turned into a bit of a mush, I think. I can't even guarantee you. I've got a flickering going on, haven't I? Let's turn that off. I can't even guarantee you that I've got any any images, anything. I don't know. I have no idea. I was shooting into the rain. It wasn't letting off. It was just miserable. When I first got up there and spoke to you, the weather was okay. I was going to get a couple of nice shots and the glassy reflection, the glassy reflection disappeared. Once you started getting that rain and the wind picked up, it just stopped. It wasn't there. I do think I have had something really good from just over the road now where the um God, it's pouring down i can see it on the front windscreen um you know i think there's something good from glenogwin and the reflections of penny owen and everything i've got those lovely reflections i think that was okay again shooting at f11 and um i did take a couple of the waterfall at f8 on the way back past a couple of icicle sort of reflections uh, not reflections a couple of icicle sort of sculptures don't know whether you've got them and I took some on my phone as well and again if they come up on my phone I'll pop them up just so you can have a look and see what I've been up to so yeah I will do another video on a dry one a proper one why I why f11 and f8 is good because you're getting that good depth of field and stuff um, so I will do another one that brings it all home and, and and it explains it a little bit better but if you have watched this if you've enjoyed this please like and subscribe give us that thumbs up i know it's been a little bit rubbish i haven't had the camera out much i've done a few handheld shots you've seen a few images but that's the best i could do with these conditions today i'm afraid um it's the week before christmas you'll be seeing this probably after christmas so i'm gonna wish you a belated happy christmas and uh, a merry new year or a merry christmas and a happy new year whatever it is and uh, hopefully you'll be with me next time and i'm going to do a few videos on simple landscape photography techniques tips hints you know best f stops like this one was supposed to be i'll do this one another time again um the best shutter speeds that you know you need to do certain things um focal points how to focus what to focus on uh, the best iso composition how you know the best ways of the nicest you know best ways of of, of 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 getting a composition and things using leading lines and stuff so I, I will do a few simple landscape videos if people are interested in them if you're not let me know in that comment below that you don't want to see that sort of stuff but if you do then let me know in the comment below again and then i know that i'm doing it for a reason to do it if you just want to see me out and about doing stuff then i'm quite happy to do that 2023 i hope for me is going to be a little bit different my resolution to me when it comes to photography is to visit some new locations. I want to go off track. I go to a lot of common popular places. So I do want to go to a few new places. I want to find some offbeat tracks, uh, which doesn't guarantee a photograph, but it does guarantee an adventure. And also I want to take less photos and basically, yeah, just, just less photos. I want to take less of the same subject if that makes sense so i still want to take lots of photographs but i want to take less of them um, so instead of like today taking five or six shots in the same place just taking the one or two uh, to guarantee that i've got the right focus and things like that but i don't want to be taking loads and loads and loads of photographs so that's i want to try and rein that in and and control it a bit better um, i can't guarantee that though so yeah till next time ciao for now thanks for watching see you soon and like I said, hopefully you're going to have a nice Christmas or you've had a nice Christmas. And I'll see you in a new year. ta -da. Okay, so one little thing that I would like to just mention before I go. Um, and I know we're sitting in the dark. It doesn't really help, to be honest. Um, let's put this light on again as well. Um, yeah, I'd like to mention Valorette. Valorette today have been a bit of a saviour. Um, these are the Markov th version 3 V3 um, gloves. These have got a merino wool lining, um, 
they've been really good and kept my hands beautifully and warm uh, they are wet inside I'm, I'm not gonna lie they they are not waterproof you're gonna get water through the cuff and I think water ever got through these gloves but they're a lot better than the version 2 and you do have your little finger out so you can get your fingers out and operate the camera I've had these on all day so a special thank you to Valorette uh, for showing us these and letting us um, show you these um, they've got a beautiful grip on the front very confident inspiring grip on the front on the inside on the palms very sticky and very tacky on the camera so you don't drop it and again you're getting the fingers out I've put these lanyards on so I don't lose them I hook them on my wrists I wish gloves would come with lanyards because they're a fantastic idea you literally put your wrist in there and when you pull your glove off you don't lose it it's hanging on your arm um, so yeah these are really really good uh, and why I'm here talking about Valorette gloves I just want to I want to show you these ones these are my newest recruit and I will be doing a video just on these uh, but these are the urbex um, these urbex are a really pretty looking glove these are mm, these are full leather and they smell oh they smell fantastic you know when you smell some leather you know leather gloves or leather clothing and stuff and jackets it just smells fantastic you've got a beautiful embossed valorette logo on the side and these again they they have a merino wall cuff and they're dead warm and dead comfortable uh, they've got a popper on the back they're sort of retro style you know like the old driving gloves they're sort of like that and these are really probably designed more for street photography but again you put them on and you've got this nice popper on the back this nice popping cuff and again you've got two finger outs so you can get your fingers out and operate the camera um, the only problem I find with these these are a size large and I am finding that the fingers are a little bit long for me um, but again if they were any smaller I wouldn't be able to get my hands in so I have to have a large to get my hand in and then I just suffer with the finger which is normal but if you're a long finger person these are going to be perfect but yeah these are the urbex and I will do a specific video just on these we'll go out and do a bit of street photography but yeah but for leather gloves absolutely beautiful and I do love the smell of leather so yeah urbex as well is another fantastic pair of gloves from Valorette so that's what I wanted to do that was our sponsor for today Valorette gloves fantastic I'm definitely going now <laughs> bye bye